This is episode one with holistic nutritionist and director of programming at Tax Sports, Alexander Arthur. Welcome to Tac Talk presented by TAC Sports. My name is Coach Mitchell, one of the many amazing coaches we have here at Tax Sports, and every week we will be discussing with a guest variety of sports topics, and as well, ways for you to improve not only as an athlete in your individual sports, but as well, your overall health. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to this podcast with me. Now, let's get this talk going. Let's go! Nutrition is something that everyone in the world needs to know about, how to stay fit and how to stay healthy. And does our guests know a lot about that? Alex is not only the director of programming at Tax Sports, he's also a registered holistic nutritionist, as well as a BA in kinesiology, sports psychology, and environmental services. We really appreciate having you on our show, Alex. And the first kind of topic I want to talk about with you is what is a meal plan that people should be basically following in their daily lives so um basically the thing that i would recommend and what we're recommending to all of our students here at tac sports Mm -hmm. is i start with a whole foods diet yeah so really just starting from let's get rid of everything that's processed yeah everything that's prepared all the uh, junk food, yeah. Yeah, all the junk food. Well, the convenience foods, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and then making sure that we have more whole foods in the sense of it's it's not processed at all. Yeah. So, for example, instead of uh, potato chips, which is processed and it's uh, taken apart, mm-hmm. cut up, fried, we're going to go for whole potatoes, yeah. right? And that transforms something that people say, oh, potatoes might not be that healthy, yeah. to something that is actually really good for you Mm -hmm. potatoes have more potassium than actually bananas do and have a lot of nutrients a lot of good fiber and that is the first step that i would take with them Mm -hmm. uh we're gonna look at getting it organic as much as possible Mm -hmm. because one the toxins and the pesticides are not present yeah and two actually nutritionally because of the the soil practices that are used for organic foods yeah there's actually more nutrition in all of the organic foods. So you actually have to eat less to get the same amount of nutrition for it. And that's an interesting point that I learned in my studies. And uh, that's why I think organic is is better for you, not just because of the lack of pesticides, but also the greater nutritional quality Mm -hmm. of the foods. Um, So I would focus on the whole foods first. Okay. And then really it all depends on the goals. Um, But the second principle that I would live by is having vegetables with every meal. every meal and that's breakfast that's lunch that's dinner yeah just having vegetables because vegetables are actually that's it's not a new thing mm-hmm. to talk about vegetables yeah. but it's a new thing to see them in the light of they're actually like medicine yeah they're so powerful for you and they're so transformative for the body mm-hmm. not just because it gives you nutrients but because vegetables actually will help everyone shed the weight that they want, not yeah. because of the low calories, but also because of the detoxifying effects. So I would say vegetables with every meal. Yeah, hear that kids, vegetables, every meal. I know you meal. hate it, but it's good for you. Trust me, <laughs> it works out in the long run. I, I would like to tell the kids that it makes you like a superhuman. That vegetables makes you superhuman because mm-hmm. they're better than any pill. They're better than anything that you can have. It'll keep you lean. It'll keep you maintaining your body in a huge way and that's that's a massive thing that's awesome all right here we have another question going uh what was a what is a kind of a common food that people believe is actually good for you but really it's not and vice versa too i would say um just looking at the the foods and and what we eat uh, a lot of it is depending on your goals mm-hmm. for example um and i'll say that the human body has the capacity to take any food and use it as fuel. Yeah. So even if we had, you know, the junk that we were talking about, but you ate it only right before and after like a big soccer game, mm-hmm. then the damage is going to be mitigated. But I would say in terms of food groups that are 
not necessary to have all the time, mm -hmm. it would be our starchy carbs. Okay. Our starchy carbs are great, great fuel. Um, and there could be some good B vitamins coming from starches, such as wheat, um, such as potatoes. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of good nutrients there in the whole grains. The problem is in our society is that we have much too much starchy carbs. So mm -hmm. you're getting a whole bucket load of energy all the time that gets converted down into sugars. And yeah. then if you're not using that energy for a game right right away or you've not, you're not replenishing after a big physical activity and you're sedentary, you're not moving around, then all of those that big high energy food is just going to go straight into our storage, our natural storage system, which is fat. Exactly. Yeah. I would say uh, to put another spin on that question is what foods people think are negative that mm -hmm. we shouldn't be having as much. I think fats. Yeah. Fats don't get converted into bo body fat mm -hmm. the way that you would imagine. It's not a direct conversion. Mm -hmm. Actually, the body can use fats as energy and it actually is harder for a fat to be converted into our body fat. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fats could be quite quite good for you the only fats that are bad are the ones that have been altered or cooked at extremely high temperatures mm -hmm. which is in frying and the altered ones are are what we find in cookies and things like that in the trans fats yeah, yeah. all right perfect uh what are most because we're talking to kids mostly here what are like most kids missing from their daily food groups like, uh like they say you can talk about a category or an actual type of food that you know that this is one of the best foods to have, and I know kids aren't eating it or drinking it right now. Absolutely. I think uh, the biggest problem with children is that they're, um, if we introduce them only those kids' meals, yeah. then they get used to kids' meals exactly. being not whole meals, not mm -hmm. you know, not a full range of flavors, exactly. not with the nutrients. And uh, I think you know it's only burgers, fries, simple meals, simple starches, mm -hmm. and... Children can eat way more than that. I think yeah. every child is missing uh, more vegetables in their diet. Every child can have more fruit as snack uh, instead of like those sugary candies because yeah. it's, it's very sweet. But the fruit has the that sugar inside the cell and surrounded by a lot of fiber. So and a lot of nutrients as well and mm -hmm. antioxidants. So food is a very a very big thing as well. Yeah. So I would say. Just getting those vegetables in in a pleasant way yeah. in every, every exactly. Meal. I think parents uh, are not, and our society in general, don't prepare vegetables and fruits in an exciting way. No. I mean, <laughs> boiled, I mean, if you're having boiled broccoli, the blandest thing, right? Yeah. Just boiled broccoli, you've exactly. taken away all the flavor from it, mm -hmm. and you've taken away some nutrients because the, the water has taken some of the the vitamins and minerals when yeah. you boil it, mm -hmm. then you're getting a bland uh, piece of vegetable that could be extremely amazing. Like if you take broccoli, mm -hmm. you salt it, you broil it, where you're putting it in the oven, it's not boiling, it's broiling, and then you get a little bit crispy. Yeah. It's like it can be a snack just like popcorn. Yeah, and exactly the same thing. Get your vegetables in. Don't like take away all this nutrients. Try and make your kids eat it for kind of more kid-friendly. You want to do it day one and tell them that this is what you need. Yeah, and and we could get really exciting with exactly. kids' meals now. Yeah, as as like we were saying before, it's like you can actually put uh, cauliflower, just you know, put it into little popcorn like chunks. Mm -hmm. Throw some nice butter on it, some salt and pepper, mm -hmm. and put it in like a popcorn container. Yeah, and instead of having popcorn, uh, which is not the worst snack, yeah. but you can get those extra vegetables in, super filling. And you can have cauliflower, quote unquote, popcorn yeah. while you're eating a movie, and that's a kind of kid prepared meal. Yeah. And it's accessible to them in their mind, but I think we just need to get a little bit more um, confident mm -hmm. that children's taste buds can catch up. Exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, what is? Let's kind of go into the same topic. What? Uh, what types of foods and drinks would you recommend for kids that are about to do competitions, i.e. a game in basketball, soccer, maybe a race in track and field or something? What would you recommend for them? That's, that's a great question, and it's something that's very, very relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, when I grew up, my parents didn't know much about nutrition, so <laughs> yeah. they would give me a full meal uh. 
to make sure I was uh, prepared for the game and you go and your digestion is overwhelmed. Exactly. Um, and the biggest thing that I would say is to have a food that is easily digested mm-hmm. before a game and not a large quantity of it as yeah. well too. Uh, things that are very easy to digest, something like a half a banana okay. about an hour before a game mm-hmm. or some sort of fruit half an hour before a game to an hour before a game. Mm-hmm. And you have to look at how big is the, the food you're eating and how complex is it. Okay. And that will determine how much you need to give yourself before the game. Mm-hmm. So let's say if we're having a smoothie, for example, yeah. there's almost no digestive effort mm-hmm. to consume the nutrients and the energy of a smoothie. Yeah. Um, so smoothies can be had half an hour before a game and you'll mm-hmm. be fine to digest yeah. depending on how big the smoothie was. But something like you're having an oatmeal, like a large bowl of oatmeal, I would give it maybe an hour um, if you're going for some sort of whole grain, mm-hmm. which is going to give you that extra boost of energy, I would go maybe two hours before, give yourself some time. They, they can p- digest fairly quickly, yeah. uh, but absolutely nothing that will get in the way of your digestion mm-hmm. and nothing that will take too long to digest. So the things that are very complex is meat. Mm-hmm. So meat will take a long time to digest Mm -hmm. same with something that's very fatty such as fries so that you'll get heartburn during the game because your body's digesting these rancid fats from the from the french fries exactly so when i was playing sports and i was the kid that played cross country basketball soccer had these track meets all these multiple events uh my coaches and my teachers always told me that uh eating pasta a night before is something that's good for the games or competitions. What is your insight on that? So yeah, that's actually something called carb loading. Mm-hmm. And if your stores are already full, yeah, then that's not going to be very very effective for you. Yeah. So only if you're doing like a run and then you're load you're reloading your your glycogen stores, mm-hmm. that will help you for the next game. So we've been discussing foods and such, but let's talk about drinks now. Uh, kids you always see at games, tournaments, they bring a couple packs of Gatorade, Powerade. Is that really what you should be drinking during these games or pre or post these games? So I would say that Gatorade and Powerade are not good because of their artificial sweeteners Mm -hmm. and the artificial additives. Yeah. So the colorings have been found now to cause ADD, Mm -hmm. kind of mental mental problems with children and can cause nervousness, all kinds of side effects. The good thing that is in there is that we need sugar and we need electrolytes to replenish our water uh, and help us to retain our hydration. Yeah. Those are the only benefits in those drinks, mm-hmm. which can help with more energy and more water retention. Okay. But certainly we get a lot of sugar and we get a lot of uh, electrolytes through our whole foods. Mm-hmm. So plain water... And, you know, as we were discussing banana before a game, yeah. it's going to have a lot of electrolytes in it yeah. um, and a lot of and some carbs for that retention as well, too. Mm-hmm. But if you want to make something at home, like add a little bit of sugar or honey to your water mm-hmm. and get some just put some salt in it. That's something like your homemade Gatorade mm-hmm. it has no artificial okay. flavorings, colorings, and it will help you retain a little bit more water yeah. because the the actual carbs, the sugars helps with water retention. Wow. Yeah. Continuing on the topic of drinks, uh, in recent uh, years, people have thought that pop is much worse than juice, like apple juice, orange juice. But are they kind of the same, actually? Yeah, so um, you know, people think always like, yeah, juice is better than a pop. Yeah. Um, but really, because you've taken away all the pulp and all the good things that a juice has, mm-hmm. it's essentially concentrated sugar and water. Um, and really something like an orange juice, people have it for vitamin C, but actually the sugar blocks the vitamin C from being used from the body. So you don't actually get to use any of the vitamin C that's in the orange juice. But if you had a regular orange, you get the, the, the bioflavonoids, which help the vitamin C get actually absorbed better. Yeah. And that's found in the peel and in the, um, the actual pulp itself. I would just like to say thank you to Alexander Arthur. For coming on the show today we really learned a lot about nutrition 
And I just want to remind all the audience that we have a new topic and a new guest happening every week. So stay tuned for our next episode. That's all the time we have for today, guys. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Shout out to my buddy Alex for making this awesome track for the Tac Talk. <laughs>